These videos are sponsored by Van Dyke Supply. This is a toll free number. You can order your catalog and your supplies 1 800 843 3320. This is going to be an instructional video on how to mount a brown trout start to finish. What we're going to do is we're going to cast this head. I'm going to show you how to cast it in Elginate and pour an artificial head so you can get rid of your oil problems. And then I'll show you how to skin it, put it on a form, finish it, paint it, put it on the driftwood, clear down to where the mount is completely finished. Okay, first thing we're going to do is start. We're going to cast that head. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our fish and we're going to wash it off in cold water, get all the slime off of it. Then we're going to take a piece of paper towel. We're going to fold it just as flat as we can on one side. What we're going to do is open the fish's mouth. Put it down in there. This will stop the alginate from going clear down inside of the mouth. So, so you're, uh, see how you got that? It'll keep it from going down the gullet and it'll lock in there and it'll be impossible to get that fish head back out of the alginate. We're going to make sure everything's good and dry on the head. Just take a paper towel, kind of dry things off a little bit so it sticks, that alginate sticks to it nice. Okay, and I'll show you how to go from there. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we've got some alginate. You get this from the dental supply place. You can maybe call a place that makes dentures or something like that and pick some of this up. It's a really good product. For uh, you got to have it to cast these heads. And then next thing we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a container. We're going to take our fish. We're going to kind of hold it there so we can see how deep we got to have the fish in water. What you do is you take your water. I use a pure water here. Because the water that I have at the shop here, just the alginate re doesn't react to it right and it won't set up. So if you have problems with that where the alginate just doesn't set up, try a different water. Maybe some water from some spring water from the store. Okay, now I've got that full. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my alginate. I'm going to feed it in there, take a mixer, and I'm going to mix it up at the same time until I get it to where I, the consistency I want it. You want it nice and smooth. You want to use a hand mixer or something to get that nice and smooth. This is, much, this is as much as we're going to need right here to cast that fish head in. And I'll show you the next step. Okay, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take some paper towel. The reason I do this so you don't scar up your fish. I'm just going to wrap the back of the, the tail there. We're going to take some string. Now you'll see the whole point of this in a second. I'm going to take that string and we're going to tie it on the fish like this. This will enable you to, to cast this head where you don't have to sit there and hold that fish in there while that alginate sets up. This is kind of a little method I use to, to uh, keep that fish nice and still so you get a better cast. Okay, now what we're going to do is take some of that alginate, put it in the water. Now, I don't really use an exact science when I mix this stuff. You'll be able to tell when it's thick enough for a mold. Let's take a little more. Mix it up. You want this about as thick as a thick milkshake is what you want. Maybe just one more little chunk of this in there. Now you want to 
want this mix just as good as you can so it's nice and smooth. Try to get all the lumps out of it. If you mix it in that from the top like that, usually your mix clear down to the bottom so you don't have to worry about don't put your alginate in and then dump your water in. Okay, now we're going to do We're going to take, place that below our stand like so. We're going to take our fish. We've got the fish's mouth open like so. What we're going to do is lower it right into the alginate. It's like so. You want to make sure that mouth fills up, so kind of maybe dip it down in there, get any air bubbles out. Make sure it's good and coated. Just lower it right down in past the, the gill cover, so just so the gill cover is submerged. Tighten your string up, like so. This is just kind of a way I invented, so I have to sit there and hold that thing. And then I can let it set so it's nice and it gets nice and set up before I even try to remove that fish from that alginate. Okay, maybe you might want to do is tap on it just a hair. Maybe work some air bubbles out if there is any. I think we can go ahead and bring this back up just a little bit. See where our gill cover is there. Okay, well if you have problems with this fish spinning, what you're going to want to do is take something and kind of lay it up against the fish like so just to keep it from turning if you got your, your string is turning or something. Get that fish to hold completely still. We're going to let that set up and you'll be able to tell because it'll turn into just like a real hard cast. Not real hard, it's like hard jello is what it is when it's done. Okay, we're going to let that set up for about 10-15 minutes. I'll show you how to remove it. Okay, now that it's been Five or ten minutes. You don't want to leave it too long. Your fins are going to all dry out on you. So what you want to do is make sure that's nice and set up. Can't stick your finger in it any. Yeah, that's kind of rubbery. Okay, now what I'm going to do, to not upset anything, I'm just going to cut the string. Take my scissors, just cut that string that we were holding it up with. Bring it back up to the workbench. Like so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to ease this fish out of the mold. You got to do this very carefully otherwise you could uh, tear the inside of the mouthpiece off. So you got to get in there and make sure your gill cover is freed up on both sides. As soon as you got your gill covers freed up we're going to start easing the fish out. Now he's a little bit caught up here on his front fins. Going to free those up. We're going to ease this fish out of here. Sometimes they're kind of tough to get out of there, so just be patient. Remember to try to free that gill cover up. Try to stay off of the alginate, just touch the gill cover itself and push it down. But stay off of the alginate, because that's where your impression is going to be. Sometimes it's kind of tough to get them to come out. Just kind of wiggle it around so you can get it freed up. Especially on these fish like this that really got a lot of teeth, sometimes they'll hang up on you. Okay, now we've got her coming up a little bit here. Freeing up. Perfect. You can see down in here, we've got our mold of our fish. There's that fish's head. See the, see the eye detail in here? On the side here? You got the eye detail, you got the nose, you got the mouth is open. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to up, mix up some Bondo, some fiberglass resin. We're going to pour a mold of this and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to make a little mixture up so we can cast that head before we skin this fish to make sure our cast turns out proper. Okay, now what you want to do, I use a feather-like Bondo. 
We're going to take and we're going to fill that cup about halfway full. Our first coat inside that fish is going to be really thin because you want it to get all the detail of that fish, of that of the cast. Okay, now that we've got the cup about half full of Bondo, we're going to do is we're going to lick, we're going to get it all uh, thinned out with some of this fiberglass resin. You buy this right at the heart or the auto auto store where you get the Bondo. We're going to do is mix that all together so it's nice and runny. This will be for our first coat. Okay, get that all mixed up and I'll show you how to add the hardeners up. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour just a little bit of this off. I got quite a bit there. Now remember, we're just going to pour a real thin coat inside that cast first. Okay, the next step we're going to do before we add our hardeners, we're going to take our mold back over. We're going to take a hair dryer. We're going to dry the inside of that mold. Now this is absolutely a necessity to do because what you have to do is take that slime off the inside of that. Otherwise, that that Bondo mixture will not stick to it. So take your hair dryer and dry that up good. As, as soon as you start seeing just a couple, it'll kind of get a little speck whiter. You can take your finger and reach in there and you can feel that the moisture's gone off the inside of that when you're done. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of our hardeners. You got our fiberglass hardener here and our Bondo hardener. What I do is take some of your fiberglass hardener. Now you have to mix this in too. Otherwise you, it takes forever for that stuff to set up. Take your Bondo hardener. I use quite a bit of this so it doesn't take so long to set up. But you got to mix it really thin or sometimes it will set up on you so fast you can't pour it. Like so. Now don't dry your mold too long, otherwise you'll crack it. So go ahead. Okay, you've got it all mixed up now. What we're going to do is pour it in there. Start at the top of the mold if you can, where the gill cover is. Oops. Now this isn't rocket science. You don't have to be perfect. Just kind of relax a little bit and have fun doing it. Okay, be sure to coat that centerpiece. Get all our bondo out of there we can. Now this is just your first coat here. So don't worry about it. All you want it is it thin enough so you can... Now what you're going to want to do is just kind of roll it around a little bit like so. So everything's good and coated. Maybe do some tapping on the bottom of it. Work any air bubbles out of it. Give her a good another roll here and get everything kind of situated in there. Maybe tap on it a little bit on the way around. Okay, now we got our mold. What we're going to do now is we're going to let that set up and then we're going to pour another coat of it in there. Okay, this is what the inside of it should look like as you're pouring it. Everything should be good and coated. You try to work out any air bubbles you can. And we'll just let that set up. Now I just used a, a one gallon can of lacquer thinner and cut off the top. You gotta, I rolled the edges so I didn't cut myself. And that's what I use as my mold, molding uh, tub or whatever for my, for my fish head. So let's go ahead and let this harden up and then we'll put another coat in there. Okay, now that we've got our first coat, it's pretty well set up. We're going to go ahead and give it one more coat. Now you don't want to fill that mold totally up inside of here. See how we can still see this? That's the bottom of his throat. We don't want to go too much higher than that. Otherwise you have a problem attaching that head. So let's go ahead and mix this up again. If you get too much in it, you can just pour it out. You know, pour a bunch in there and then just, if you get too much in, just drain a little bit of it out. I'm going to 
throw a little bit more in there and make that stuff just a little bit darker shade of red. Sets up a little quicker then. After you pour a few of these, you'll get the hang of it. Okay, like so. Now we're going to do is going to do the same thing. Going to start on the top edge, just like so. Drain her all in there. And like I say, if you get too much in, don't worry. You're just going to go back through and pour it back out. I'll go ahead and tumble it again. Tumble your can, kind of roll it. Until you're satisfied, you got everything in there. Okay, now that we've got it, you can see we're we still we're still a, a little bit below the bottom of the throat there, was which is just perfect. We'll be able to attach that head right to that fish body without any real major problems. I'm going to go ahead and tumble this one or two more times here. We're going to let it set up. And as soon as that hardens up, I'll pull that fish head out of there and I'll show you how to go on from there. Okay, now what we're going to do, everything's all hardened up. We're going to take, we're going to ease that cast out of there. Now be careful doing this just in case your mold isn't quite like you want it. Just kind of ease it up out of there. If you save that mold, you can pour one more than one fish head like this. You know, if you have several fish the same size or something like that, I usually just throw it away because I use the original cast on everybody's head. There you go. Look at that. Perfect detail. Take a little bit of sanding, a little bit of cleaning up, and this will be one nice fish head here. Okay, and let's, now what I'm going to do, I haven't picked a side I want to mount on my fish yet. See, look at the mouth detail and everything in there. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to put artificial teeth back in it. I'll show you how to do that later on in the video. Nice little fish cast there. See the detail on his gill cover. Okay, we'll just set this aside now and we'll get on with posing the rest of that fish. What you're going to want to do is pick your best side of that cast. And that's the side of the fish that we'll, we'll be posing. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a side and I'll show you how to start skinning that fish. Okay, now what we're going to do, I've got a piece of butcher paper laid out here. The wax side faces down. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to trace our fish. We've got a marker. Okay, we're going to get our fish to where we want it as far as curvature in the body. Give them a little bit of life action there. I got the head so I know which way I'm going to make my incision and everything. Set that up out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and trace this through. I kind of mark like that where his fins attach, where his head attaches on the top and the bottom. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to carve a body for this thing. That you can get a little more precise on your on your body measurements that way, carving your own body. It's really a simple process. Okay. Now we got our fish like that. That's going to be our pose. Now I want the tail to curve to the outside. So what I'm going to do now is turn the fish right on its back. Now this will be my inside to outside curve. Okay. Now what we're going to do is just kind of get her to set right. Take your pen. Trace it out again. Okay, this fish is starting to get a little dry. If they do get dry on you like that, don't be afraid to take them with some uh, Windex maybe and mist that skin down a little bit. Okay, now that we've got our body like that, next thing we're going to do 
So we're going to skin that fish. So usually what I do before I put my template away, I make sure I make my incision on the right spot, I turn the fish over, and I'll mark it. Now this is where one of the incisions is going to be, the incision is going to be. So now I can tell where I need to be. There won't be any mistakes of cutting the incision on the wrong side of the fish. Next thing we're going to do, the scissors and a knife, we're going to remove that head. What you're going to want to do is cut it here, like so. And we're going to take it, we're going to cut it on top, just where the head attaches. That's all you want to do, right where the scales stop. They'll stop and they'll start right in this spot here. And it's just kind of a round, round little incision here. It's like so, and you go right over to the other gill cover. It's like so. And that one just doesn't want to cut through. Okay, now we freed the bottom up. Now we're going to fill it, free the, the gill cover up. We're going to take your knife, insert in there. It's like so. We're going to remove that head is what we're doing here. You want to leave as much of this on there as you can. That's going to help and when you're posing the fit or when you're pinning everything down, you have a little bit extra to pin with. Cut a little bit off or tear a little bit, don't have a heart attack. It's easy to fix. Like I said earlier, this really isn't rocket science. You can turn it into rocket science, believe me. You can make this fish look just like it's fresh out of the water. You can win, win uh, awards with a fish like this. If you really take the time, do the posing right, do the painting right, do the cleaning right, you do everything right, you can really make an award-winning fish out of a mount like this. So it all depends on what you want to put in with it, into it. Okay, now we've got this head pretty well loosened up. Okay, there we go. Now this is what you're going to end up with toward the end. Now, I've made my incision here so I haven't lost where I'm going to cut on which side of the fish. So now what I'm going to do is take my scissor. Now this is going to be the back side of the fish. You're not even going to see this incision. I like to use a scissor because it cuts through the scales instead of tearing the scales out. Where if you use a knife and try it, run a knife up there, it'll just shove the scales out a lot of times. It's going to be on the back side like I said earlier. Now what we're going to do is you're going to go down each each side of the cut toward the bottom of the tail, like so. Again on the other side. It's like so. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to finish skinning this fish. I've got several tools here. Now this is a, a fish skinning knife here. You can purchase this through one of the taxidermy manuals or the magazines. We'll give you an address and phone number where to get that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now what you want to do is you want to, when you're running that knife under there, you want to run it with the scales, not against them. With them. Just like when the fish is swimming in the water. It keeps you from dislodging scales. I use a stainless steel table like this because it just aids in that. Okay. Now just keep running your knife down. like so. Now don't worry about it if you don't get it real close to the skin. We're going to flesh this fish out anyway. So we're just going to remove the, the meat in its, in its entirety. You know what you're going to need to do when you get to the backbone like that? the back fin, you're going to have to go in there and cut the fin away from the body, just like so. And just keep running your knife up underneath that skin. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to come down to the bottom. What I like to do is run my scissor in there a little bit. Okay, kind of free up that bottom jaw where that attached. There's a bone in there. Just kind of separate that. Again, run your knife up underneath. Just like so. Now I'm going with the scales again. Again, we're going to take our scissor. We're going to go in there and free up that anal fin there. We're going to go up to our center fins. There's a, a bone that kind of keeps those attached on the side. So just kind of free that up. And we're going to go back up to the top here. Free that up a little bit. You'll see how to do this once you get started on it. Now the best thing to do is practice skinning a fish. <clears throat> Don't use a customer's 13 pound rainbow you got out of the river, you know, near a state record or something like that. You get the drift. Just don't uh, start on a, a real trophy fish. Go ahead and catch a couple smaller fish and just practice skinning them. Takes a couple times to figure out the anatomy of the fish. And what I'm doing is just removing that skin. Same way with casting that head. It might take you one or two shots to when I first got started, I'd ruin one or two molds. Usually I never got it on the first try, but now I can just first try every time. Just takes practice. Now it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing here, but what I'm doing is just removing the skin. See, I'm keeping it flapped over like so. I'm just running that knife. This knife is serrated, so I'm not cutting through the skin. It's the reason you use a serrated knife like that. Okay, we're getting close to removing the skin now. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to free up that tail. Okay, I got my heavy cutters here. This is just a pair of tree cutters. You don't want the kind with a real sharp point on them. See how dull that point is? That way you don't poke, get through that skin and snip your finger or cut a hole in the skin. You can, you'd have to fix later, or, you know, which, which isn't a big deal. If you do do that, don't worry. There's easy ways to fix it with, with the epoxy. I'll show you later on in the video. Okay, now we've got the skin pretty well freed up. We're going to go through and I'm going against the scale just a little bit here. Turn my knife around and go the proper way. Okay, now we've got that skin pretty well freed up. There you go. Let's clean this up a little bit and go on with the video. Okay, now we've got our skin all off. That's what it looks like when it's peeled off. I thought I'd give you a little visual of that so you see what you've got. Now what we're going to do is flip that skin over. We're going to take some Borax. Mule Team Borax Laundry Detergent Booster. You can get this at any uh, uh, grocery store. Comes in a little box. You're going to need all kinds of this for processing fish. Now what I'm going to do and sprinkle that on that. This helps soak up the blood, soak up the oils. It uh, helps bug proof the skin because it kind of poisons all the meat. Now what we're going to do is take our little tool. This thing is serrated on one edge, on this top edge here. See if we can't get you a little bit of a close up of what this tool looks like. Almost looks like a curry, curry comb. Used to comb horses hair with. See that, how it's got that bite on it? Okay, now you can use either side of this knife. What we're going to do is take, we're going to run that down. You want to use a nice flat surface for this, otherwise you lose a lot of scales. 
If you lose a lot of scales, don't worry about it too much. Some fish, especially female fish, you'll lose a lot of scales. A lot of times on real small rainbows or real small browns of females, you'll end up scaling the fish by the time it's completely done. But their scales are so small in any ways that you, you never really even see them on the mount. I do a lot of fish like this, have a lot of pleased customers. It gets to the point where anymore I get so much fish in, that's just about all I'm doing. Okay, now let's just go through and clean this fish skin up like this. The guy can make a decent little living on the side if, uh, if you want to get into this, mounting fish for people. Maybe mounting your own fish. They're kind of pretty to have on the wall. Most everybody likes them. Women really like them. They don't, a lot of them don't care for big animal heads, deer and elk and stuff like that, and bear on their wall, but you put a fish on their wall and they love them. I've got women just come in and they'll, they'll buy fish already mounted from me, pay me to, to mount them a fish because they just love the looks of them. You can put them in a the kitchen, in a dining room, anywhere, and people, they're a really good conversation piece, especially a well done fish. Okay, now we're, what we're doing is we're just defleshing this thing. Now I'm using the smooth side on this fish because on that serrated side like that, it's a little hard on the scales on these smaller fish. And this isn't a huge trout, so the scales aren't really hard and set in good and, and large in size so they don't dislodge as easy. So let's go ahead and just keep cleaning all the meat off there and leave all, all around the fins like so and I'll show you how to clean all that off. And now you can see we're getting close to being done here fleshing. All we got is where our fins are attached here, here, and here, and here. Let's go up to the front of the fish here a little bit. We'll clean this up a little bit before we go on. Now you remember these fish, see how that is how that's laying in there? What we're gonna to want to do, there's a bone in there. You're gonna to want to try to remove as much of that bone or all of the bone as you can. So just kind of peel that away. Usually on these smaller fish, it's pretty easy to do. Now if you tear that little membrane there, don't worry about it. Easy way of fixing that. So, get it peeled down to the fin there. Then what I usually do is I take my scissor and I'll snip that off, part of that bone, so I can see where I'm at. See, what I'm doing is just removing that bone. I'm getting all the way down to where the, the fin attaches. Now be careful, you can cut the whole fin right off doing this. So when I can't see where I'm at, I'm going to take my little tool, I'm going to flush that up a little more. It's like so. Just kind of cleaning off around that where that fin it goes. Now I could do this in about two minutes, but I want to show you guys how you get in there and you just clean that a little bit at a time. Just be patient. I'm just going to clean one fin at a time. Now you see I got a little bit of that bone left in there. That's not going to hurt anything. Try to remove it if you can. There we go. Now you can see I've got my fin cleaning off now. See how that fin attaches right there? Right there. Okay, usually what I'll do is I'll push that fin up so I can clean that meat off. Take my scissors. Be careful not to cut through the skin itself. You can cut a fin right off, but if you do, don't worry about it. So I see that I cut a little small hole there. I went a little bit too deep trying to clean too much of that meat out of there. I like to try to get these fish mounts as clean as you can. If you do, get them clean like that, and you don't have the oil problems down the line. 
and that fish might last forever. As you can see, we got it pretty well cleaned up in this first fin area here. See that? Let's go on to the next one and do the same thing. Up on the, this is the worst part to clean off on these fishes up around the, I think it's called the Corinthian bone. Just keep cleaning off here. What I'm doing is just pulling that, that skin off of that bone. Now if this kind of grosses you out a little bit, you can use rubber gloves when you do this too. Probably smell a little better on your hands afterwards. Now you can go through and remove this other bone here. See, I'm just pulling that bone out of there, being careful not to. I don't really. I keep a, a hand or a finger on both sides as I'm pulling, so I'm not just yanking on the bone here and where I can dislodge and then rip a whole big old hole in the thing. See now I got that whole bone right out of there. Lay it flat on the table so we can see where we're at again. See, we're getting there, it's getting cleaned up a little better. Let's maybe take our little flushing tool, clean it up a little bit so we can see where we're at. Just be patient when you do this. Don't get in a big old fired up hurry. See, like so. Now we're getting that other bone cleaned off, or that other fin cleaned off. That's the last one we have to do. It goes pretty quick. Okay, we're just pulling that skin away from that bone. Like I say, if you do happen to tear that up a little bit, don't lose any sleep over it. It's really easy to fix later, after everything's dried. What I'm doing is I'm just cutting that meat off that last fin. Now be careful again so you don't cut that fin off. If you snip a hole, don't worry about it. It's easy to fix. Okay, we've got it pretty well cleaned off there. Got all the heavy meat off anyways. Okay, let's go on to the fins here. Cut those. There's a bone in there. This is the bottom, bottom fin of the fish here. See, here's the front. There's the, the, the center fins. I'm just kind of showing you where you're at so you know what to look for. Now there's a bone that attaches these two together, so you got to split it. Like so. Then what you can do is you can peel those two apart. It's like so. See how you have two bones there now? Got one here and one here. We're going to go through. We're just going to clean those up again. Be careful not to cut them off. I would just recommend just starting on a, on a fish you're not even going to mount when you first skin one of these things. Just to get the kind of get the feel of it. You might skin one or two fish. You might only skin one fish and then decide, oh geez, I can do that. Go through and do that. Let's take a little bit of borax. So we're able to clean that up a little better. Get some of that grease off of there. Usually once I got that skin to where I think I have it clean enough, I'll rinse it off in good cold water. And then you can really see what you've missed and everything. We'll go back through and clean it up again. Okay, let's go to the dorsal fin here. Do the same thing with that. What we're doing is just cleaning the meat off of this. Careful you don't cut too deep. 
See, I'm just on the borderline there. I didn't cut a hole, but you're right on the borderline of, of getting there. Be careful. Every hole you don't cut is one hole you don't have to fix. Okay? Now, take our tool, clean it up a little bit again. Just like so. Okay, we're pretty well cleaned up there. Let's go to the anal fin. We'll clean that one off. Now, this is your fin right behind the anus there. Flip it over. It's pretty self-explanatory once you get in there and start cleaning. Boy, there, I got a whole cut I'm going to have to fix. Pay attention to what I'm doing here instead of looking at the camera. That's okay, though. I'm going to, this will give me an, a little bit of chance to go through and show you how you repair mess-ups like that because you're human and you're going to do that. Nobody's perfect. But if you can go through and patch up any of those holes that you cut or anything like that, that's what makes a good taxidermist. You can fix anything. Be sure to clean around the anus really good. That's where you'll get an oil problem if you have one. Let's go ahead and throw a little more borax on there so we can kind of see where we're at. Clean that up real good. Just a little bit more there to cut off. Okay, now let's go to the tail. We're going to want to clean that off. Take our little tool and go in there. You're going to have to go against the scales a little bit here just to get it to clean out. Now what I usually do is take my heavy hedge trimmer shears there. I'm going to go in and remove as much of that bone as I can in the meat. Be sure you don't cut through and cut your finger off. That probably hurt. Be sure and try to keep a flat surface too when you're doing this. Just so you don't dislodge any scales. Okay. We're getting this fish pretty well cleaned up. Don't go too much against the scales of the fish if you don't have to. That's pretty well cleaned up enough right in there. Okay, let's go ahead and rinse this fish off so we can see exactly what we've got. Okay, we've got our fish laid back out, got everything cleaned up again so we can tell where we're at. What I'm just going to do is just give this thing a real light sprinkling of the borax. So I can still see where I've got any flesh problems. Get my tool all cleaned up here so i got a good fresh tool. I'm going to go through it and I'm just going to give it one little light fleshing to remove anything that I've missed. Okay, just keep going through and clean that fish up best you can and then rinse that fish again and I'll show you how to mix a cure up we're going to put that thing in some liquid cure to cure that skin and we'll show you how to go on from there okay now what we're going to do we've got everything cleaned up we've got ourselves a little container here a little plastic container we're going to make up a little bit of liquid cure here Get this out of one of the taxidermy catalogs, supply catalogs, called Liquid Cure. Follow the directions on the side of it and you'll be fine. Now if you have any kind of allergic reactions or anything, you might want to use rubber gloves when you use this. I don't have any problems personally, but every person's different as far as allergies goes. Now what you're going to want to do is use a couple cap folds here. I'll use maybe four. Sounds good to me. Okay, now what we're going to do is fill the rest of this up with cold water. Okay, now that we've got that all filled up with some water, just going to drop that skin in there. 
Make sure it's submerged. That stuff will suds up just like soap. Okay, now we're going to leave that in there for two to four hours. I leave it in there overnight sometimes. It doesn't hurt it a bit. Swish that around. Make sure everything gets the cure on it. Just like so. Okay, now we got that. Let's set that aside and I'll show you how to go on and, and uh, form that body. We'll cut the body out of some blue... Blue foam, they call it. Uh, it's a carving foam. You order from Van Dyke Supply. I'll show you how to use that template and make a body. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to make our body. Take a pair of scissors. We're going to cut these out. Now be sure you draw your lines through here and here so you know where your head attaches. Okay, you get the gist of that. We'll get these all cut out and I'll show you how to cut out a piece of this blue foam. We'll get her all worked up for you. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to lay our show side out. And take a couple T-pins. sure we got this thing nice and flat. Like so. Take ourselves a little black marker. We're going to trace this fish onto the foam. Pretty easy, huh? Go all the way around. Now, the next thing you're going to need is a keyhole saw. It's about the cheapest saw I can buy, right there. Get it at the hardware store. Okay, now what I'm going to do to save myself a little time in cutting, I'm going to turn it just like that so his belly's down just like the fish is going to be posed. I'm going to take my top template. Now, I don't, now if I did it that way, it'd be turned. you want to make sure you flip your template over. That will give you your outside curve instead of an inside curve. It all depends on what you want. This particular customer wants an outside curve. I'll have to use maybe three pins on this. Just all I'm doing is just pinning it to hold it down. Like so. Take your marker, trace it out again. Like so. Now what you're gonna do is take your keyhole saw. This is going to be kind of difficult to do with film at the same time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a keyhole saw and I want to make sure I cut straight. And I'm going to cut that back side of this out. This so it'll be a little easier to cut the, cut the fish out, it'll be a little straighter. Cut through here, it's easier to cut straight. So 
the reason I cut that off that the way I did. If you've got a bandsaw, bandsaw really works good for cutting this stuff out. You gotta be real careful though. Because you can cut through this foam pretty pretty easy. It's like cutting through butter. You gotta be real careful you don't cut yourself. Okay, let's go ahead and lay our template back up top. Like so. I get the curve. I gotta get the curve in there better. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out our other portion here. center of the fish from the front to the back like so. Turn it on the top edge. Now you want to do this on all four sides. Now I'll show you why you want to do this. It keeps you from ruining the, the anatomy of your fish when you're carving it out. Okay, let's get our files and stuff and I'll show you how to go on from there. Now one last little thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where that head attaches. There and there. Now what I'm going to do is kind of draw a half moon down to it, like so, on both sides. Take my little keyhole saw. Now to make sure you don't cut off too much, what I end up doing is I'll go to both sides of it. I'll cut the top part a little bit, or the bottom part a little bit, and then I'll go to the other side and finish up from there. Just like so. Now everything's square right now, but you're going to get rid of that. Right at this point here. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to peel this down to a point like this, remember, on the bottom of the fish, the anatomy calls for that. The top's going to be rounded off like so. All this is going to be cut here, like so. All this will be cut off here. That's the reason for the line in the center. You, you want it, when you're sanding and grinding this thing, you want to make sure that line stays there. Now, see I'm carving this, I'm staying off of that line, I'm just taking the square edge off of it. Just like so.
take off that square edge. Like so, see how I'm staying off of that line? We're just taking this outer square edge off. Turn it over. Let's get all four sides and I'll show you how to go from there. Okay, now what this foam is, this is a dustless blue foam. Okay, you can find it in the Van Dykes catalog under foam, carving foam. It's a dustless blue foam. It works really excellent for, for doing fish. Okay, you can see we've got everything rounded off here. still pretty rough. I still have all my lines like you're supposed to, so we're not ruining the anatomy of the fish. Now what I usually do is I'll take it, grind down just the side of that where that head is going to sit on there. Like so. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to grab our fish head. We're going to need to cut that out with the Dremel tool to make sure we get everything so this fish head will attach on there before we get too far along on our carving. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our fish head, take a black marker, we're going to mark where that gill cover is, take our Dremel tool and we're going to cut this out. Just like so. Okay, you can see where the scales end here on the top. That's about what you should look like. Okay, now we're going to take our Dremel tool and we're going to cut that out. Okay, now let's take our Dremel tool and we're going to cut this out. Okay, now that we've began cutting this, you can see I've cut all the way to the end here on this side. And again on the top, now if you can see down in there, that is the reason you don't fill that up past this, this mark here, up past this gullet. Because if you do, you'll be trying to cut through two inches of Bondo with that little Dremel tool and it's a real pain. So make sure you stay back a little bit with your Bondo, that's the reason, reasoning behind that. You can see again on this side, this is this cast is just perfect. Okay, let's finish cutting this thing out, and I'll show you how to go on from there. Okay, now what we're gonna do is show you how to carve on that so you can get that head attached right the way it needs to be. Now you want to do this before you get too far along on your carving. What we're going to do is go in and remove some of that so that head will slide on there. Getting pretty close now. What I've got here is a body tool. You just buy this at a parts supply house. Maybe the same place as a paint shop or something like that where you go to get your uh, Bondo or something. This is just used for carving Bondo while it's still in the putty state, while it's still kind of, it's not quite set up yet. You can shave it down with something like, uh, with a tool like that. That's what this is. It's a body file, body tool file. Okay, now what we're going to do is, we're just going to kind of line that up the best we can. What I like to do is just kind of make an impression about where I'm going to put it on there. And 
just slowly carve everything down until you get that head fitted. See, now we're fit pretty good there, but we're not here. So we're just going to keep carving. I'm going to have to carve this down a little bit as we're going. Now you need to make sure that you're not hanging up here on the, on the fish. It's not catching inside of here. Okay, we're getting pretty close now. Now is when I just kind of squeezed on there a little bit. Then I can see, I'll leave an indentation where, where I can see where I need to grind this down a little bit. Now these smaller fish like that, it doesn't take much to take too much foam off. So do it just a little bit at a time. Be careful doing it. Just go slow. Okay, we're getting closer on our gap there, but our head's kind of at way too much of an upward arc. You can see we need to take some off this belly yet. Now if you get to where you, you don't want to cut too much off, take a little piece of uh, 50 grit sandpaper 40. Use that to carve down foam. So, I'll go back through and start fitting that again. Now where we're hanging up is here. Do you get the gist of that? Just get that to where that head's fitting on the top and on the bottom. And leave a little bit of gap on the sides here. You want a little bit of a gap. You know, so you can see light through there, about like that side there. You can see the light through it right there. That's about what you want because that skin's going to lay underneath that. See right here. See that gap in there? That's what you want. Okay, get it to fit on the top and the bottom and I'll show you where to go from there. Okay you guys, now we finally got that to where, we, where everything is fitting really good on the top, really good on the bottom. We got a little bit of a gap down below. We don't have much here yet. But we'll get that when we grind down that body. Now what you're going to want to do is take your skin out of your cure, rinse it off in good cold water, and uh, we'll test fit that skin a couple times so we can get that body just where we need it, and I'll show you where we need to go next. Okay, now we got our skin out of our cure. We're going to lay it right over the top of the body like this. We're just going to test fit the skin. Now. If you have any questions when you're doing this, just test fit that skin 10, 20 times if you have to. That's how I first learned it. It's not a real difficult thing to do, especially when you're working with a trout like this. It really can be, turn into a heck of a lot of fun, believe it or not. Okay, I can see we're still pretty far apart in the back on our seam. So what we're going to do is we're going to carve down on the body and try to get it fit. Pay close attention to his tail, right here. See, I'm, I'm getting pretty close to where I need to be back here on his tail. So let's go ahead and stay away from the end of that tail a little bit. That's where you can really grind off if you have too much. If you go to grinding too much, well, if you have a problem, you do grind off too much, just take a little bit of potter's clay and smooth on there and kind of build that up a little bit if you have to, if you end up doing that. Just be careful not to. What we're going to do now is we're going to take our rasp again. We're going to go through and just keep working. Now I don't remove these last lines until my final sand. When I sand it for the last time. Unless I have to if I got my body way too big. But remember, when you do that, you're going to lose your anatomy of the fish. You gotta be really careful. You gotta know what you're doing when you when you cut this form. That little line thing on there really does the trick. You be careful to stay away from the end of the tail. Now if you get to where you have a bad body line or something on here, 
So you can go ahead and take a lump out or something like that. Just be careful what you're doing. You know, don't don't change the anatomy of the arc of the fish and stuff like that here. together. So if, you, if you're within an inch, you're good to go. I mean, you've you got, you got plenty here up on top. That's, that's plenty. I mean, that, you're just about right right there. By the time I put glue on that and sew that, that'll pretty much bring that together. You don't need to be totally together here because you're not going to see that. will be on the back side of the mount. Okay, let's finish sanding that body. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our sandpaper and we're going to go through and give this thing a final sand. I'm able to, to uh, take as much foam off as I want with this sandpaper. It sands really easy. When you test fit your skin toward the end, make sure you sand it first. You test before you, you know, when your gap starts shrinking in the back, you want to test fit that. You got to sand this smooth and that skin will slide along that a lot easier won't be catching up all over the place. You get a lot more accurate measurements. So let's go ahead and sand this whole form. Okay, now we've got our skin all test fitted. What we're going to do is we're going to go back through and we're going to put a block of wood in the back of that foam. So we got something to attach our mounting bracket to and we have something to attach the fish to a piece of driftwood toward the end. Now, what you do is take, I, this is one by two I use here. Take and put it in the center of the fish. You want it in between this front fin here and his, and his rear fin there. So put it kind of toward the center. You can use a small piece of plywood for this if your fish is too skinny. This one, it, it'll be fine. Now just take a knife, cut that out, pick it out until you can fit that block of wood in there. We'll hot glue that down in there. What I'm doing here, just taking my knife, cutting this whole square out. Making that cut out in there enough where I can put this block of wood in there. You notice I ain't pushing toward the outside of it. I'm pushing toward the inside where it just breaks it free because I've cut along the other sides. Like so. Now just keep hollowing that out until you can get your block of wood set in there. Okay, now I've got my block of wood. It'll fit in there like a charm. What we're going to do is put some hot glue on that. We're going to hot glue that inside that form. That'll give us something to attach our bracket to and our driftwood when everything's all done. Okay, now what we're going to do is take your hot glue gun. We'll get that on your fingers. Burns. Terrible. Okay. Slide that down in there. Just like so. What I like to do that's an extra little precaution, put a bead or fill any gap I have with hot glue. If I have any holes in it, I'll squirt that hot glue down in there. Like so, in case you have to go into that same hole again, it'll be nice and tight. 
Okay, just let that harden up a little bit and we'll show you how to sew that skin onto that form. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to add a little bit of clay to the tail end of this fish here. Just right on the tail of it. Like so. This is just regular old potter's clay. What this does is help you mold that tail in a little bit. It's going to shrink up on you regardless unless you... Boy, I, very seldom can I ever get those things to... When they get done shrinking up to be nice and flat, you always have to fill it a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is take some glue. I'm going to paint that form. Now what this glue does is that really makes that hide a little slicker so you can pull it together better. It handles temperature better as far as the skin shrinking and expanding on you. If you got some glue on it, now this is just water soluble glue. Okay, Let's glue that whole form up like so. Once you got the whole form glued up, now what I got down here is a wet towel. I can wipe my hands on it, whatever I want. Next thing we're going to do is get our fish skin, just like so. Make sure you got it rinsed off good after it's been in the liquid cure. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lay that skin right over their form. Now remember when we were test fitting that form. How we do it first, we'll go down and we're going to test fit the tail, or we're going to lock the tail right where it needs to be. We're going to put that dorsal fin up where it needs to be, put the top of the back, see we've got just a little extra skin here. Let's get that tacked to where we need to be, here, and on the tail. Now we're going to go through, we're going to stretch everything to where it needs to go. Like so. That takes a little bit of work to kind of work the wrinkles out and stuff like that. You might want to take a T pin or two, lock down a point maybe in the front. Now, what you're going to do is when you get everything lined up to where you like it, you're going to go on the back side of the fish, you're going to T pin that down in two or three spots on each side of the incision. What this will do is keep everything intact while you're sewing it up. Okay. We'll go ahead and finish tacking it like so. Then we're going to turn the fish over and I'll show you how to sew that up. And now what we're going to do is I've got some needle and thread here. And what I've got is a heavy wax thread. You really don't have to go this heavy on a trout. You can use dental floss, works good. And I got a two and a half inch glover's needle here. And I've got a sewer's palm. This enables you to shove that needle through a skin if it's too thick. Okay, now what I did is I tied a, a knot in one end of it. What I'm going to do is start in the back side of the tail here. Just like so. Lift that skin up so I can get underneath. Like so. That's going to be the back side, so you don't have to be totally perfect on this. When it dries, you're going to reseal everything up, so you'll never see it. You'll put some paint over it. You'll be good to go. So don't lose any sleep over this, on, over the way the tail is attached. Just make, try to sew it up as best you can. <laughs> Go down to the other end of it, pull the needle through. I'm only pulling a single thread here. Okay, just I don't have it doubled up. Now that's why that clay is in there too. That enables you to as it dries up a little bit, you'll be able to pat that down. That clay will smooth out. Okay. Now 
taxi that to where it needs to be. And we're going to start down here with our stitch. After you shove it through the top like that, you want to keep a hold of your thread here. This might take a little bit to pick the stitch up. Now you got to hold your thread. The needle goes right underneath it like that, which pulls it down to a nice little knot, which pulls evenly on both sides. Again, let's show you that knot again. We're going to start, we're going to pull through the skin. Grab a hold of your string. Cinch it up a little bit.